If p and n are integers such that p is greater than n and n is greater than 0, and p squared minus n squared is equal to 12, which of the following can be the value of p minus n? The first thing I did is called the difference of squares, p squared minus n squared is equal to p plus n times p minus n. You could FOIL to check that. But that gives us p plus n times p minus n is equal to 12. And when we're going to ask which of the following can be the value of p minus n, we can just try making p minus n 1 and seeing if we arrive at a contradiction. Namely, <coughs> contradicting the fact that they told us p and n are integers. Well, if p minus n is equal to 1, then I can take p minus n in this line right here and replace it with 1 so I get this line right there. But then that simplifies to the line right below because p plus n times 1 is just p plus n. So I have p plus n is equal to 12. But remember, I also have this other equation, p minus n is equal to 1. So I put them both down there, and then I add up the two equations. And if I add the two equations, I get 2p. The n and the minus n, they cancel. But when I add the two right sides, I get 13. And then p is equal to whatever 13 divided by 2 is, but that's 6.5, and that contradicts the fact that they told us p had to be an integer. So, one can't be right. We can do the same thing with p minus n being 2. That was the second choice right there. And then when you run through the steps, you get p is equal to 4. And that doesn't contradict. Then you can do the same thing with p minus n being 4 and you end up getting p is 3.5, but that does contradict. So, only 2 works. And by the way, you should also check to make sure that n is an integer, but if p is equal to 4, then you go to your equation right here, p plus n is and you just plug in 4 into that. And from that you can realize that n is equal to 2, which is an integer as well. And also, p is 4, n is equal to 2. <coughs> well, p is greater than n. So, therefore, it doesn't contradict that. They're also greater than 0.